So far we have developed the concept of electric potential and while it seems like it may be convenient in certain circumstances to be able to compute potential energies if you're to choose to put charges at certain locations, um, it turns out that the real use of it is to make it a lot easier to figure out electric fields. On our way to that, let's go ahead and examine a parallel plate capacitor. We'll go ahead and say that this one has a width of three millimeters, just to give some sort of concrete number to it. And we'll go ahead and hook this up to a one and a half volt battery. We will see eventually that uh, Batteries move charges around, um, so this is a metal plate here, this is a metal plate here, and batteries will move charge around in order to maintain this potential difference. As a result, we will go ahead and end up having a surface charge distribution of negative charges on the plate that's hooked up to the negative terminal of the battery, and a surface charge distribution of positive charges on the plate that's hooked up to the positive terminal of the battery. So then we can go ahead and start to visualize our electric field. We know from before if we have a capacitor, um, is if it's one that we can treat as ideal, and we'll just go ahead and roll with that here, um, we'll have a nice uniform electric field that points from the positive charges to the negative charges. Okay, so if we, so since the battery is maintaining a constant potential difference of one and a half volts, we can, we can say that the potential at this plate is one and a half volts higher than at this plate. Like I say, we will eventually get into how batteries do that, but just for now, we'll just know that they can do that. So we're allowed, in a situation like this, to choose zero volts to be wherever we want. The usual choice is to put it at the negative plate, but there's absolutely no reason why you have to. Anyway, that will make the positive plate here one and a half volts if we make the usual choice. So, let's think for a second. If I were to move a positive charge, say, from here to here, would its electric potential energy increase, decrease, or stay the same? Pause on that and get back with me. So, we would intuit that if I had a positive charge that was closer to the positive plate and I move it toward the negative plate, its electric potential energy would go down because it's moving in the direction where it spontaneously wants to travel. So, would the, um, the voltage when we go from here to here, would it increase, decrease, or stay the same? Right, it would decrease because for a positive charge, um, the potential energy difference and the voltage difference are always proportional. If it was a negative charge, then the changes would have opposite signs. But here we're considering a hypothetical positive charge. All right, let's think of a different thought experiment here now. Let's say I have a charge. Doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Let's make it negative this time. And let's say I move it always perpendicular to the electric field line from here to here. Let's say just to give it a nice solid number, uh, let's say we moved it five millimeters. Um, how much would the voltage have changed by? Pause and get back with me. Well, it would have changed by nothing. And this is because if we have a negative charge here, um, we would be feeling an electric force to the right 
but our displacement is down. So the work being equal to the force dotted with the displacement would be zero because this is a right angle. So the electric force would have done no work on this, so there would be no change in electric potential energy. So what does that mean for the change in voltage going from here to here? Yeah, that means that the voltage doesn't change there either. So everywhere on the plane, on a plane that's perpendicular to the electric field lines, the value of the voltage will be the same. So for instance, we can just start to draw in some planes here. So keep in mind, I'm drawing in 2D, but we should be thinking of this in 3D. Um, actually, I need... Let's do a little better job of it. There we go. So at these planes are all surfaces of constant voltage and we call these equipotential surfaces, or sometimes we say equipotential contours. So everywhere on the plane, because keep in mind we're going in and out of the screen as well, everywhere on this plane the voltage is the same. And in fact, if I had these symmetrically spaced, everywhere on this plane would be 0.3 volts, everywhere on that plane would be, whoops, 1.2 volts, 0 0.9, 0 0.6. So we're starting to get at least some feel for what's going on here. If we, we find that the equipotential surfaces are always perpendicular to the electric field lines. And we can use this to figure out the strength of our electric field. If we go back to what we had for a uniform electric field, we remember that the voltage difference across any, a long, traveling along an electric field line is equal to the electric field strength times the uh, displacement. And I'm just working in magnitude here. We can do the same thing here, just with the entire capacitor. So we can say that the voltage, the difference in voltage across the capacitor, so the voltage of the positive plate minus the voltage of the negative plate would be equal to the electric field strength times the spacing of the capacitor plates. So we would get that the electric field strength would be the difference in voltage across the capacitor over the uh, separation. Well here it was maintained at 1.5 volts by the battery and we said the separation was 3 millimeters so 0.003 meters for a 500 volt per meter or if you prefer 500 newton per coulomb um, electric field strength. <coughs> Now we could also, if we prefer, we could uh, make a plot. If I were to superimpose in a coordinate system here, I could say that this location here is x equals zero, this location here is x equals three millimeters, and just go ahead and run myself a number line from the one to the other. If I do that, I could actually go ahead and make a plot of the voltage um, as a function of position. So we know that at x equals zero, the voltage is zero, and at x equals three millimeters, the voltage is one and a half volts, and it will just go nice and uniformly like that. Now, I will point out, and we will get to this more in a future video, but for now, I will just point out here that the slope is a constant. And in fact, it is 500 volts per meter. And here, if we look, the spacing of our electric field lines never changes anywhere. And the electric field strength is also a constant. 
This is not a coincidence. Now, to be clear, there's, all we can say here is that the voltage difference across the plates is one and a half volts. Absolutely, all this analysis would be the same if we decided arbitrarily, so I'll just pick a different color here. We could have decreed the positive plate to be zero. If we did that, then this is negative one and a half volts. So in a conventional passenger car, you would say the negative terminal of the battery is zero. Certain older models of semis would have declared that the positive terminal was zero. And so then all the voltages are positive, are um, negative in the system. Um, we could also choose to do something else. We could decide, for instance, that um, this was um, 0.75 here. And then this is negative 0.75 volts. All that matters is that the difference is a volt and a half. And the only difference that we'll have is that we'll just shift this curve up and down, but the slope would stay the same. So just be aware there is a bit of freedom in saying where zero volts is in a system like this. And most of the time you'll make the choice that, um, z that the zero volts is at the negative plate. But the other two choices I've shown are choices that get made from time to time for certain circumstances. So we can see here too that we're going to be developing a, some skill here. Um, this, when I look at these surfaces, these contours here, when I look at this, I should be visualizing 3D planes going in and out of the screen. And also, I should be thinking, yeah, the voltage is increasing as I go to the right. Um, or if I look at this graph, I should be able to start to reconstruct a picture that looks something like this. This is something that's going to take a little bit of practice, but will pay lots of dividends. Um, kind of spoiling the uh, story here a little bit, where this is going to be going is it turns out that it's much easier to compute voltages at locations because voltages are scalars rather than vectors. And so you don't have to take components of them. As we build up on these observations, we'll develop some mathematical operations, mostly just involving taking a bunch of derivatives, um, that will allow us, once we have a description of the voltage in a region, to figure out the electric field strength. And that turns out often to be a lot easier than to set up the integrals to evaluate the electric fields directly. But more on that in future videos. Catch you later.